today uh, is something we're calling Brainwave. Um, it is the first ever aftermarket uh, <coughs> vehicle management system. Uh, this is something that we're doing obviously within the MSD booth, uh, but this is something that is actually uh, just as big of a part of uh, the, the entire industry underneath this roof here as it is uh, inside this booth. So this is something that uh, we're reaching out to uh, all, all the people under this, this uh, tent here and, and trying to get partners to join this with us. So let me explain what Brainwave is. Uh, basically, it is a network in which all electronic things that use data, can publish data, or control uh, can, can be a part of. Uh, at the basic level, what it is is a, is a uh, CAN-based network, uh, as you see here in orange. So all of the orange components uh, or connected together with orange is represents the network, uh, and it is uh, all the copper associated with it. So there's, we've developed connectoring that's all common. We've developed the uh, network protocol that it sits on top of CAN, and then uh, we've also developed a mobile app, which I'll go over here in a second. Uh, but the point of this is, is to make uh, make our cars, whether they happen to be uh, early model 1960s, this is, happens to be a Chevy, or it's a 1970 Chevelle, um, or our post-96 uh, late model XYZ, uh, is to be able to make our these components that go in these vehicles compatible with one another electrically. So, for instance, we have a, uh, an atomic, um, a atomic EFI, and we all have, also have our new uh, transmission controller, and they're bro both Brainwave enabled. And essentially what Brainwave does for them is it allows the atomic to talk to the transmission controller, transmit things like RPM, coolant temperature, um, in order for the TCM to, uh, to properly shift the, shift the transmission. That's all done with one connection, one connector uh, that contains power and ground and on all the things necessary. The customer benefits from that. They don't have to put duplicate sensors on the engine. Uh, they don't have to uh, worry about calibrating TPS sensors and things like that. Uh, in addition, uh, what you see here is a Dakota Digital Dash. That is something, um, a lot of problems that we've all had probably when we install EFI systems in some of these old cars is what do I do with my, my gauges? They used to plug into all these holes nicely and now I've got a pile of wire and I don't know where to put the sensors anymore. You don't have to worry about that with Brainwave. You can just simply hook it up to the, uh, to the Brainwave connector. And as you can see here, it's just one connection on the back of the, uh, on the, back of the Dakota Digital Dash and it consumes the information that is being published on the Brainwave network by the EFI system. You can just keep, keep, keep going, take, keep taking that a step further. Um, back here you have an air motor fuel pump. You know, that would normally be hardwired through wires, perhaps all the way to the front of the car. That could be pulse width modulated. A fuel pump could be uh, using information that was published by the EFI onto the network. Keep going, suspension control on a new, on a new car. You know, like for, for instance, uh, with our neighbors here at Airlift, they're on, when you try to put these suspension systems in, you often have to put ride height sensors along with them. In a lot of cases, these cars already have ride height sensors. There's really no need for duplicate sensors if you can share that information. We can grab ride height information off the bus from the vehicle, the stock vehicle, publish that on Brainwave, and then uh, Airlift can take that and use it, incorporate it with their product. So it requires less sensors, less cost on the bill of material, um, less cost to the installer in terms of headaches, trying to put brackets in, all that sort of thing. Yep, yep. So all of this uh, is all uh, con communicating together and it's all configured uh, by this application we've developed called the Brainwave app. Now what the Brainwave app is essentially is a container, an app within an app to hold apps. So in this case we have um, four devices that we're going to discover on this fake network we have here. We have the Atomic EFI system, we have the Atomic TCM, uh, we also have the Dakota Digital Dash that you see here, and also a Vintage Air HVAC system. So this is essentially what the customer would see after they bought all these parts that were Brainwave enabled, they plug them in together, and now they would see these, these uh, products being presented to them on the app. If I want to interact with this, I would just simply click the LS for instance, and then this presents me with an LS MSD specific experience and allows me to tune all of these uh, different parameters one at a time. If I wanted to uh, do a little bit more advanced setup, 
I would go to auto tune and I would be able to actually see the VE table and actually tune the EFI system if I care to as well. Um, so you can actually, you know, it's a, it's a full tuning suite within the app. So you don't necessarily need to unplug this, go to your PC just to tune. It can all be done right within the same application. Um, in addition, you can see, this is a demo, you can see our tuning mode. Uh, this is auto-tuning at work. So if you just care, you weren't a tuner and you just wanted to see auto-tune working, you could see that as well. Um, in addition to that, if, if you want to get out of here and go try something else, you know, the Dakota Digital experience is much different. It's much simpler. It's just a matter of selecting uh, resources that are on the network and tying those to gauges. So you'd be able to do that with one app and, and grab those resources that would be on, on the, uh, tying them to the gauges. Uh, same with Vintage Air. You could click the Vintage Air experience. It's all designed by Vintage Air and they would be interacting with things that matter to them. You know, tell the EFI when the AC is coming on so it doesn't stall, etc. Uh, in addition to this, we have a um, a uh, fully featured dashboard. So somebody could uh, use this dashboard if they if they care to, you know, take an iPad and, and French that into the dash. They could use uh, one or more of these things and use them as instrumentation if they care to. Uh, but this again is fully featured, fully customizable. We'll have different backgrounds, maybe a leather background, brushed aluminum background, things like that that um, would resonate with the customers. Um, the, how this actually works, if, if any of you are wondering, is uh, the, the partners that we uh, have are going to be designing these, these experiences for the customers, but it's actually all driven by a database that sits on the back end of this. So for instance, if a if, uh, manufacturer of this module cared to come out with a version two of it, um, they would simply just publish the differences that, to Brainwave on a uh, database, and the database would be automatically synced to this, uh, to this tool. So if they set up, if, uh, you know, Vintage Air all of a sudden wanted to publish what the cabin temperature was uh, on Brainwave for somebody else to use uh, in their next version of software, they would just publish that change in the database, and then this application would automatically sync to the internet the next time it was connected. And next time that particular model showed up with that version of software, it would automatically publish, it would know that it would publish uh, that information on the network. So it's uh, fully automatic. Part of what this app also does is place matchmaker. So if there's only one uh, RPM on the system, for instance, that came from the uh, engine controller, it would automatically tie that to the tachometer that happened to be on the Dakota Digital to get dash. So it plays matchmaker with all the, resor with all the resources that happen to be there. Um, so a lot of the setup is automated the first time you connect in and it configures itself. If there happens to be more than one place to, say, uh, control a fan, you know, there could be an EFI to control a fan and they could also have a beat cool system on here for whatever reason. Um, we can still have the EFI control those fans even though they, they aren't hooked up to the EFI. The EFI would just say, hey, I want the fans to turn on right now. And the beat cool would be sensitive to that kind of information published on the bus and it would turn the fan on. And that would just be all integrated in the product. So we're not really putting our customers in the middle of all these uh, these companies anymore, trying to get company A to work with company B as these vehicles become more advanced or as we come be, we're working on more and more advanced vehicles that come from the factory. Uh, we can we can now use Brainwave to integrate that experience and have it be fun again. So, anything else you should mention, Manny, uh, without me moving? <laughs> uh, you'll have some more information at gobrainwave.com. Yep. Uh, if you have some specific questions on it, there's a contact us uh, area. Feel free to fill that in. Throw us a note. There is some literature here available. I'd encourage any questions we found with the questions for the first day and a half. Start creating some, hey, what, could you do this? Could you do that? For the most part, the answer has been yes to every single one of those. So, uh, if there's any specific questions, we could uh, we can hit for you now. Now is uh, now is the time to bring them up. Yeah. Yeah, and as you can see, I mean, if you guys happen to be walking by the booth, uh, you know, tomorrow or, or last day of show, see more and more logos on here. That is an indicator that uh, these companies have are, are bought in. These manufacturers are bought into this architecture, and uh, we're going to be working to implement their next version of their products uh, on the Brainwave. So, uh, this time next year, you'll see real parts here rather than blue boxes. 
Any other questions anybody has uh, on the system or how something might work or how to sign up or anything like that? How many partners do you have now? We, we have about five or six. So Aeromotive, uh, Airlift, and RideTech have both uh, committed. Vintage Air, Be Cool, and obviously MSD. Um, all of our future race pack product will be on this network as well. Uh, so you'll have data loggers and sensors and, and things like that.